couple minutes. We'll be starting at 7 o'clock, all right? So right now what we can do is just get our materials all ready. So if you look down here, I'm just going to leave this up for a little bit. You can see the paints that we'll be using today. We have white paint, black, burnt umber, which is kind of a brown color, cobalt blue, um, yellow oxide, and light green. White's going to be the most important one. We're going to use a lot of white in this painting. So go ahead and get that set up. The two brushes that we'll be using are the small round and a half inch filbert brush. And of course we'll want a paper towel and our water cup to be able to clean out the paint from the brushes and a canvas and we'll want a pre-sketch on here. So if you're painting with your own materials take a moment to go ahead and sketch out this guy on your canvas. If you're watching this later <laughs> You can skip through a little bit. We're going to wait for everybody to join live. Hello, welcome. I see I have a few viewers now. Um, I went live just a couple minutes early so that people could find the location for this video a little bit easier. But we, s we still are going to start at 7, okay? So what we can do right now is get our materials ready. So I just switched the camera over. And you can see here the different paints that we're using today. We have our white paint, black, burnt umber, cobalt blue, yellow oxide, and light green. So you can get your plate all set up. And we'll be using two brushes today, our small round and our half inch filbert brush. So go ahead and get these all ready so that we can start in just three minutes here. And then we have our canvas pre-sketched. You'll also want a cup for water and a paper towel to be able to clean out your brushes. We'll be starting at 7. Um, the comment section on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching from, is how you can interact with me, okay? So leave comments. Let me know who I'm painting with and feel free to ask questions. Again, we will be starting at 7. I'm just here a couple minutes early so that everybody can kind of get cozy in here. I've got somebody saying hello. Hello, Chloe. Thank you for joining today. Let's see who else is going to be joining. Chloe, let me turn this back over here so you can see, if you have not already, the paints that we're using. So we're just, we can just get this all set up. and the canvas. If you're using our materials, you'll, you can have it already pre-sketched. And then we have our brushes. If you guys are all ready, you can go ahead and leave that in the comments, so I know that some people at least are all ready to get painting. And then we'll get started in just a minute. Oh cool, we have some people watching from Texas. Will you guys be painting with us today? To my friends from Texas that are joining, are you guys going to be painting with us today or are you just watching for fun? Chloe used to paint with us all the time when she lived here, and then she moved okay. away, so now she gets to paint with us again. Hmm. Just online. <laughs> cool. I just got to hear a little bit about your backstory, Chloe, that you used to paint with us, moved away, and now you can finally paint with us again. So it's kind of cool that we have this opportunity to go virtual and connect with people that we maybe wouldn't have been able to. So welcome back. I'm glad you can join us tonight. Awesome. I'm going to pull up some comments on this iPad right here so I can see you guys' names. We'll be starting in just a moment. So once again, I've got my materials out right here, so get that all set up. I just want to make sure everybody's ready before we get going with this. We have our paints, our brushes, and a pre-sketched canvas, cup for water, and paper towel. And bear with me if this is feeling a bit repetitive. I just want to make sure everybody's here 
everybody knows the materials that they want or that they should have ready before we actually get started. Okay, looks like we have some people here now, so I'm going to go ahead and get started officially, okay? So thank you all so much for joining tonight. My name is Josiah, and I will be your artist tonight. Um, whether, from wherever you're joining, I just want to extend a huge welcome to all of you, and thank you for choosing to make art with your Tuesday night. Um, it's really great to see people wanting to paint and create beautiful things. Creatively Uncorked is located in West Fargo, North Dakota. So if you're ever in town, and once this whole pandemic gets out of our system, um, stop on in and visit us. We would love to see you at one of our social painting events that we have most nights of the week. We also are available virtually at creativelyuncorked.com or on Facebook or YouTube, where you're probably watching from tonight. The video that you're watching right now it will stay on our Facebook and our YouTube for about a week, and then it'll get moved over to our Patreon. So if you watch the whole painting tonight and it was just too fast for you, or you'd, you'd rather see the whole process and then follow along later to be able to pause it, that's totally fine too. So again, you will be able to find that here for about a week, and then it will get moved to our Patreon. We have two rules um, at our studio here. And these just are kind of pro tips to have a good time, not so much house rules. So I want to extend these to you as well from wherever you're at. And the rules are have fun. We like to say we do fun art, not fine art. So even if this isn't something that you're going to hang on the wall above your bed maybe, and maybe it's not something you'll pass on to your grandchildren, but we just hope you have a great time tonight and that you create something that um, is connected with fun memories. Rule number two is no negativity. Because we have all of the rest of our days to be negative, right? So right now, as we're creating art, um, just take a moment to kind of separate from that, leave that all behind, and join me in creating a painting, OK? So whatever that means for you to be able to get into that positive mindset. For me, I just made a mug of tea. So if you want to make some tea, get a snack, whatever you need to do, turn on some background music. Um, just kind of set a po positive atmosphere and try to leave all that negativity behind. I'm going to go ahead and switch the cameras now. So we have this overhead view, which you'll be able to see the whole painting process on. And then we have these two on the side here. So you'll be able to see who is talking to you. That's me. Hello. And then right here is a side camera. So you can see if I'm covering up any details here, you can peek over at this camera here and be able to see those a little bit more clearly. Um, and then up here at the very top left, we have the finished result of the painting. I like to be able to look at that as a reference photo as we're painting to kind of see where we're going. It's always good to be able to look ahead and see where we're going. Now, one more time, I want to go through these materials. Um, right here is our paint palette. So we have white paint, black, Burnt Umber, which is a brown color, Cobalt Blue, Yellow Oxide, and Light Green. For brushes today, we'll be using a small round for fine details, as well as my favorite brush, the Half Inch Filbert. So from one side, it's flat but with a curved top, but if you rotate it, it's got a really nice fine point, especially once you get some paint in there. This will get really sharp. And we can do some pretty cool fine details with that one as well. With both of these, if you haven't painted much before, keep in mind that if you, and I'll just show you on, your, on my plate here, if you press down really hard with any color, you're going to get a much thicker line. And if you press lighter, barely touching the canvas, or the plate in this case, you're going to get a much thinner line. All right. Um, as far as other materials, we have our canvas here. Mine is already pre-sketched, so if yours is not yet,
go ahead and take a moment to sketch that out. That will be really helpful. And then we have a water cup and a paper towel just so that we can clean out our brushes and keep the paints separate. I want to show you guys one more thing and then we're going to get started actually into the painting. And that is our art kits to go. So some of you might be using one of these tonight. These are really cool. You can order them at our website at creativelyuncorked.com and then either pick them up in studio or we can ship them right to you. And inside you'll find the brushes, the paints you'll need, as well as the written instructions and the canvas already pre-sketched. We're also now doing wood signs with these. So if you have ever painted with us before and did our wood signs, you can now get those ordered in our art kits to go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the painting now, okay? Again, comment section is the best way for us to interact. I know we have some distance between us, but that comment section can really cut that in half, okay? So if you have a question, or if I'm going through fa too fast through the painting, please just let me know. The first brush we're going to use is our half-inch filbert brush. And we're going, to be use we're going to be filling in this background first before we get um, too carried away with Baby Yoda here. And in the background, if you look on the example here, it's got this really brushy look, okay? So the way I'm doing that is just kind of being free with this brush, swooping it and picking it up. And you'll kind of be able to see that as I go. Now I like to blend live on the canvas, especially with this kind of a background. So I'll be starting with white up in the top left corner and transitioning to blue as we get further away from there. If that seems kind of difficult for you, the other way we can do it is just have a really light blue in the center of our plate that we gradually darken as we go out, okay? When you're ready though, let's go ahead and start in this top left corner. I always like to start with the light, lighter colors in a painting. So I just filled in this corner right here with white paint using that half inch filbert brush. Now the water here will be used as a way to kind of thin out the paint and spread it out over a greater surface. The other thing it's really helpful for is if the paint starts to fall asleep on us. So if you're not quite done with a certain area and it seems like it's starting to dry, you can add a little bit of water in there. All right, now that we have that white in that corner, go ahead and grab just the tiniest little bit of blue and we're going to add this on the outside of that. As we get close to the details of the body here, you can kind of press down with that brush so that all the hairs fan out and you can get really close to that line. If you're just not having it with this brush, go ahead and grab that smaller one. And then, as I was saying, I like to be very loose with these brush strokes. So I'm kind of doing these swoops. And pull that into the white a little bit. Gradually up into that white to get a really nice light blue. And maybe it'll fade all the way into pure white in that top corner. Now, I got a little bit carried away with the water, OK? So we don't actually want it staying. Um, on the surface like that. So be careful around those edges. Remember your very first art lesson. Stay within the lines. And just keep adding this blue out here. So it's going to get darker as it goes away. Uh, the darker color carries more weight when we're, mix when we're mixing. So if you did happen to go on with too much blue, you may have gotten this area a little bit muddy. That's no problem. Just go ahead, clean out your brush a little bit, grab some fresh white, and add that from the top. Thank you. 
And the horizon line right here, if you don't have it sketched on there, it's going to be just about a half inch or so up from the bottom of his body. So we want to kind of stop with that blue when we get there. Be careful around those fingers. And we don't have to have a perfect line here. If you look up on that example, we have this kind of wild texture going on in there. We can sort of create that now a bit too. We'll do the same thing on the other side when you're ready. And maybe you'll need to add a little bit more white in there to make that a really smooth transition. Hope everybody's following along. I tend to paint really fast on the background, so I'm trying to slow down a bit. But let me know if, if I'm rushing through this too much. So I'm just jumping between that blue and that white, and you'll notice I'm not actually cleaning up my brush in between each color. I'm just scooping the white from one side. When we use other colors later, we can scoop from one of the other areas, just so we make sure that we're not getting all of that blue dirty. And you might find a cool pattern, a cool brush stroke technique for this background, something different than what I'm doing, and that's totally fine. You might be actually stumbling upon your artistic style, which is really fun to find. We all have one. So if that's happening, feel free to branch out a little bit. OK. I see Chloe saying we need time. I'm assuming you mean you want me to slow down a little bit. I will try to pause at quite a few spots too, okay? So if I finish the blue before you, I'll take a break before we move on to the yellow. One really good thing to do every now and then is just to kind of step back or just squint your eyes if you don't want to actually stand up away from it. Just squint your eyes and see how those transitions are doing between the different shades here. So on mine, I see right here I've got a bit of a stripe. And we don't want stripes in our sky. We want it to be a pretty smooth transition. So if that's happening to you, whether it's here or somewhere else, go ahead and add a bit of a middle tone. That'll probably mean adding a little bit of white in there just to smooth out the transition. Now one thing people like to do is carry their colors over the side of the canvas. That can be a really cool way to make the painting really pop out from your wall if you're going to hang this up without a frame. So that's something I would recommend if you have the time to. Now once again, we're just darkening it up a lot more as we get close to the horizon here. Being careful around the fingers and the ear. And 
and we'll take a little break once we get here to let everybody catch up. So that is it for our sky. We just transitioned a bit from white to a darker blue. Just using that cobalt blue. So again, we'll pause here for a moment, take a deep breath, a sip of tea, munch on your snack a little bit. That's all we're doing for now, just filling in that sky. And before it has a chance to dry, if you want to make any adjustments to it, now is the best time. It's, it's difficult to kind of patch it up later. So if you have any areas, like what I did up here, where the transition seems too sharp, you can smooth it out by adding in a little bit of white there. And again, if the paints are drying and you weren't quite done with them, just add in a little bit of water. When you're all done, in between steps, just leave your brush in the water cup just to make sure that the paint doesn't dry in there. Just a reminder that there's that comment section there if there is any confusion or if you guys are done you can let me know. I'm just going to pause for another minute. Why'd you guys pick this painting tonight to tune into? You a big fan of this, uh, this character? I think he's adorable. especially the eyes. That's my favorite part of this painting. Those eyes really pop. And the little mouth. <laughs> so we'll be adding those details later. All right, I'm going to keep moving along with the painting. Yes, he is cute, Chloe. <laughs> So I'm going to move along now to our sandy um, ground, okay? So go ahead and clean out that brush, because if you have any blue left in it, it'll turn this yellow to a green, which we don't really want at the bottom there. So we're basically going to do the opposite of what we did before. So before we had gone from white and we had shaded in with another color. This time we're going to start with this yellow and we're going to gradually turn it into a lighter one. So let's start at the bottom. Again, using a little bit of water in that brush. So it should just glide right along. I really like this color yellow really beautiful. Very cozy. And I'm just filling in the bottom section here but leaving a bit of a gap there. So we're just filling that in with that yellow oxide. I'm using that half inch filbert brush. And with everything that we're painting one trick that sometimes we don't learn right away when we start painting is the brush strokes, to pay attention to your brush, stro brush strokes. So in the sky, these were going kind of wild, and I imagine this is kind of wind, maybe, or something like that. But on the ground, down here, we want everything to lay flat, because that's how the desert would be. If they're going vertical, it might look more like grass. 
So think about the texture of the things that we're painting and have the brush strokes reflect that. All right, with this little section here now, and again, I'm not really cleaning out my brush. If you have too much yellow in there, you can clean off a little bit on the side of your plate. But we don't need to really scrub it out. And then I'm just going to grab some white from the side. And with this white here, we can go ahead and lighten up some areas in this, this sandy ground here. So especially the top here. Maybe leave the shadow area around him untouched. We can add a few other highlights into, se into a few sections. And then once more, we don't want it stripy. So if you have areas like this where the transition is just a bit too sharp, you can go ahead and smudge those together. You can also add a little bit more of that yellow if it's getting too light. All right, so take a moment to finish that ground area. And then we're gonna go going to get kind of crazy here in this middle section, okay? So bear with me. If you need to watch it first and then join in, that's totally fine. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to blend these colors just a little bit. So they probably dried a bit. So what we can do is take some of that blue and add a little bit of fresh paint into that blue section. Just going up a half an inch probably on both sides. So this is a really fun detail I like to do. Then we'll clean out that brush and do the same thing down here. We'll add a bit more of that fresh yellow. Now, taking a little bit of water, we're going to smudge these together. So I'm going to start in the yellow, and we can bring in those swooping brush strokes again. And we're going to just move up a little bit. Until that kind of fades out. We might need just a touch of white to give that a lighter tone to it. I'm just doing a lot of these swoopy crisscross crisscross brush strokes. We can bring some of that down into the yellow too. If it looks too sharp. And this might look a little bit weird, but I promise it'll it'll look okay once we have it on both sides. And once we have the whole painting complete, this is all background stuff. And all we're doing is getting rid of this really sharp horizon line, smoothing it out a bit, making it a little bit more abstract. So again, I'm taking a bit of water, starting in that yellow. I had a bit too much water there. So if that happens to you, you can just scoop it up or soak it up and then dab it off on the paper towel. We're going to start down here and go up into that blue.
You might need to re-dip and grab a little bit more yellow. That's OK. So this will create a bit of a green here. So maybe it's a, a bush or something. Maybe it's just a haze off of the desert. And then use a little bit of white. Maybe you don't need this, but I find it can help lighten it up a little bit. All right. Once you have that all done, we're going to take a short break to make sure everybody is all caught up. Take a breather after all that blending. So once again, just walking through that, just with my words now, we put a new stripe of yellow on the horizon line and a fresh stripe of blue above it, and then just took a bit of water in that brush and smudged it starting in the yellow and bringing that up so that we create this green area. And then we added a little dot of white in there just to kind of lighten it up and add some variation. I do want to point out that if you go over it too many times, it will start to turn all to the same shade of green. And we don't want that, OK? So if that has happened to yours, if you have overworked it and now you are trying desperately to change it by just going over it again and again, um, just add in some more of either color. And don't blend it so much this time. So once again, you can add a bit more yellow on the bottom, a bit more blue on the top, and then leave it. Find that happy medium between those two and leave it. I know it's hard to put down the brush, but you can't uh, finish the painting if you don't. So I hope this is turning out well for you guys. Let me know in the comments if everything I'm saying is making sense or if you need more time or anything. We'll have another uh, tea break. Just a quick reminder that um, it's really important to step back or squint and look at your painting just to get that perspective. This can also be a, use or a helpful way to um, get that new perspective if you are getting upset with the way your painting is looking. Because I promise all paintings look better from far away, even professional ones. All right, when you are ready, if you're still working on that background a bit, that's OK. I promise this next step is really easy, so you'll be able to catch up really quick. We're going to grab that filbert brush again and clean it out. If you're having trouble cleaning it, maybe you are just not pressing down hard enough. You do want to kind of paint the bottom of your cup, so we're not grinding it on there. But you, you do want to press a little bit to be able to get the water between all of the hairs on the brush. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to color block the whole body. And there's two colors in here for the color blocking. We have our light green for the face and the hands, or the fingers. And we have our burnt umber for the whole toga looking thing he's wearing. Let's start with the light green because we'll probably do the most layers on the face. So go ahead and grab some white. And remember what I was saying about mixing earlier that darker colors carry more weight. So we want one scoop of white, a little bit of water in there to help us mix it, and start with the tiniest dot of the screen. You're not going to use nearly as much as you think. So a little dot of green, and then blend those together. And then just keep adding green until it's the color you want. And again, you can see an example of what we're going for up there. The lighter you keep this, the more those eyes will really pop. 
But of course, he is an alien. We do want him to be alien looking, so make sure you have some green in there. So we want something along those lines. And you'll probably have a ton of paint in your brush when you're done with that. So the best way to clean that out is just to pull it off on the side of your plate, flip it, and pull it off on the other side. And even once we start adding this on there, if you need to darken it up a little bit or lighten it up, we can make those adjustments. I'm going to add a little bit more green to mine. All right, so get the color you want. There's no right or wrongs with this. And let's go ahead and start filling in that face. And if you can still see the pencil lines or you feel comfortable um, kind of refining those when we add the details, you can cover up as much of that as you want. I'm going to try to avoid the eyes on mine. But if we have the eyes, I feel comfortable drawing the mouth in. So if you don't, though, make sure you're avoiding that so that you can still see that line. I'll try to give you some time if you're being more careful around those edges. And again, we have this one here. If this one is too big to get all this detail for you. So right here, I like to emphasize that earlobe. He's got these huge ears. We want to make sure that we can really see those ears and that they stand out. So we're just filling in that whole face with that light green. And then you can clean this brush out because for the fingers, we're definitely going to want to use that smaller one and leave it in the water cup. Now with the, sm with the small brush, just remember what I said earlier about the thickness of your lines and just make sure you're not pressing down too hard. And he has three fingers on each hand. And you're really not seeing the hand, you're just seeing the fingers. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky to see all the details on your, paint, on your sketch. But it should have this one finger here and then the other two over there. So it's kind of like he's got this going on. So two of them are closer together. And then over here he's maybe making a little bit more of a fist. So these two are really close to that other one. And if you turn out with something else, that's OK, too. But I know it can be tricky to see all that detail, so I like to show that. And actually, let's do this. Let me zoom in. There we go. So you can see the detail in the fingers. You can also see when I do this that my background there is really messy. Like I said, all paintings look better from far away. And then here is the detail on the face. So again, the only really pronounced area is that earlobe. Let me 
you zoom back out. All right, how is that going for everybody? Let me know if you need a moment. Take one more sip. All right, I'm going back to that filbert brush now. And cleaning that out really good because we don't want any of that green in here. And now we can get the base coat for his coat. So with this one, again, we're going to start with the light color, as we always do with mixing. So pull some white to the side. And make sure you do have a little bit of white left over, OK? So if you're taking all of it right now, at least leave a little bit to the side. And then just add in a little dot of brown, burnt umber. Let's find a good color for the coat. I normally do this really light, but I think sometimes I make it too light, OK? So I'm going to darken it up a little bit more this time. So keep mixing, keep mixing. We want something like that. I know the light can make it look different than it actually is. So let me, there we go. So that's the brown that we're going for, maybe a little bit darker. Again, we can adjust it once we actually get going on the canvas, too. And we are going to fill in the whole um, main body area with this, for this coat. And once more, if you don't feel comfortable freestyling or free handing those eye, or the details in the coat, those lines in the coat, make sure you're leaving them untouched. So right here, you can kind of just Avoid that line, and you'll leave a little bit of a white line there for reference later that then we can darken up. And we do fill in this collar here. I know it's going to be a lot lighter later on, but that will be done through adding lighter colors on top. And remember, once again, the textures. So right here, this is going to be really fluffy. So if your brush strokes are a little bit more dabbed on, that is all the better. Because that's what we'll, we'll be doing later with the darker colors on it and the lighter ones. We'll just be dabbing them on. Down here, we can make it a lot smoother. And notice how I'm just leaving those white lines around the pencil marks of the sketch just to be able to see where those are for later. So one good trick with paintings, no matter what you're painting, is to get a base coat on a section. So this face is a really good example of this process. You start with a base coat that's kind of in the middle. You start with your middle tone. And then from there, we're going to add our highlights and our shadows. So we're going to go a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. And then, if you need to do more work with it, you can find middle tones in between those. So with this painting, we're not really going to dive deeper than the shadows and the highlights. So we'll have three tones represented in that face. But if you're doing a very realistic, you know, photorealistic painting, 
that's kind of the way you get there is you divide it into middle tone, highlight, shadow, and then you can find middle tones in between those ones as well. And just keep dividing it and get more and more detail. So we just filled in all of the, the coat with this light brown, burnt umber and white. All right. I'll give you guys a moment. What we can do now is grab that tiny brush, the small round, and let's go ahead and add our shadows into the face. And this color is going to be a little bit different because we all have a diff or different for everybody, because we all have a different face skin tone here. So what I'm going to do is take some of this dark green. And let's add a little bit of this lighter green to it. So we want it pretty dark, but we don't want it to be quite as dark as that probably. Of course, if you did turn out with a much darker green, you'll have to have a darker shadow as well. So a good way to test it is just to make sure when we're doing these lines that they really stand out. So even if you squint your eyes, you'll still be able to see them. You can also just kind of hold it up to the painting and see how it looks. And when you have a color that you are happy with or you think it's close enough that you can at least test it, let's go ahead and start outlining some things. Now I start with the ears because that'll kind of tell us where the face is so we can do all the face detail a little bit more um, clearly. So right here we've got this earlobe. Let's go ahead and outline the bottom edge of that. And the top. And notice right here we have this line where the ear connects. I go in a little ways and then down. Just curve down a tiny bit. And now take a moment to make sure that this color is the right color for you. I'm going to darken mine a little bit. And we're going to add a few squiggly lines in this ear for some of that texture there. So we've got this one right here. There's this top ridge of the ear. So we're just kind of separating that. And notice I make that line a little bit squiggly. And that'll be important with kind of the whole face here. Give it a little bit of a squiggle. It adds some character to it. We want to kind of continue this outer ridge of the ear. And I like to start right here with a bit of a curve in. Again, leaving this a little bit squiggly. And it goes down a little ways. So now we can really clearly see that this is the outside and this is the inside of the ear. And then I just do one more line and that is kind of an S shape right here. Make sure it's not too S-y. Otherwise people might think that you have a hidden message in the painting. Now on this side what we're going to do is kind of start where the cheek would be, okay? So this cheek right here is going to curve gently from right here on the chin 
to where it connects right there, where the ear connects to the body. So just kind of trace that without actually touching it a few times. And then we want to just touch down for this middle section right there. And then we can outline the whole top ridge, again creating a bit of a squiggle in that. We can give a hint of the earlobe here. The reason we're not seeing all of the detail over here that we see over here is that he's actually facing a little bit that direction, looking up here. So this ear is a little bit behind that cheek. So we'll add a little bit of that earlobe, just a hint of it, and then a little bit of this bottom ridge. So now we have both the ears done. All right, we can add those face details now. Now this is one of my favorite parts of the painting, and that is the mouth. So it's going to be actually pretty close up to those eyes. So go two thirds of the way up from the chin to those eyes and just create a smile. We don't want this to be a very sharp smile. So it's just kind of like a parenthesis turn on its side. Now I know it might look a little bit goofy right now, but bear with me. Also keep in mind that he's looking off to the side there. So right here it's at the center of the eye, here it's a little bit closer to that left side. And then we can add these little, um, it's like where the smile presses up the cheeks. I don't know if there's a word for that. And he's got this cute little chin here. Now we don't want him to look like a marionette doll, so we don't want to connect on both sides. But I like to draw this line all the way down there, and then give a little hint on this side. So we're separating that bottom jaw from the cheeks. And we'll add a little bit of a shadow under here, smooth that out. Now we can really feel this cheek right here, and this one here a bit too. We've got a few more details, so you actually don't need to clean out your brush yet. So I'm going to add a bit of a shadow around these eyes. So on this one I really stuck to the right side there. I imagine there's more light coming in from this side. And with this one we'll catch a bit of that shadow of the nose. Go straight over and then down a little bit. And now there's one other detail in this guy's head that's kind of cool. It's, it's like if you could see the separation of the two halves of your brain. So he's got this really solid line going down the top of his head. And we'll give just a hint of that right here. So right here, we've got this side, and then the other side going out that way. And this is where they meet. So 
So now if you squint your eyes, you should be able to see the, the shadowed areas. You should be able to see the separation between the ears and the face. If not, you can go ahead and add a little bit more in there or darken up that color if you need to. Or you can come back at the end and darken it up as well. When you're ready, let's go ahead and add some of the shadows down here in the body. And what I'm actually going to use is the filbert brush. And I'm taking some of this burnt umber and adding maybe just a little bit of that lighter one that we used earlier. So it should still be significantly darker, but not all the way to this one. And what we're going to do with this is add some of those details of the shadows in that coat. So we want it to look really wavy and wrinkled. So watch first. So with this brush, if you are drawing a thin line and using that, the flat curved edge of that brush, you can press down a little bit more heavily at some spots and then lighten it up. And you can get a much thicker line for one spot. That's one reason I really love this brush. There's no right or wrong place where we add these. But we can kind of feel these areas where it's folded, it's billowed out right here. This is the seam right here in this cloak. I'm realizing I keep calling it different things. I don't really know what to call it, what he's wearing. Although I definitely would wear one. I don't know about you guys. Let's add a little bit of a shadow on this side as well. And then we want to draw in the areas where the arms rest up against the body. And notice I am pressing down and giving it a little bit of a wobble to it so we can feel the wrinkled fabric. And then let's get the underside of this collar. So I just did one solid line along that underside there. And then what we can do before that dries is just dab it a little bit to make it look nice and fluffy, bringing it up a little bit into that lighter area. Now there's one other area, I kind of already got mine filled in, but right here between those fingers, we can have the shadow. This is the underside of that, or the inside of that sleeve there. And then while we have this tiny brush out, let's add a little bit of a shadow on the underside here, the bottom of this cloak. This is looking pretty good. What about you guys? How's it coming along? All right, what we are going to do now is fill in the black for the eyes. Because we want this to have plenty of time to dry so that we can add that white detail to really make those shine. And if you need to rotate your canvas, that's totally fine. I find that that can be a lot easier, especially if you have wet paint here, so you're not smudging that with your hands. I'm using that tiny brush and just filling those in, being very careful around those edges. Now, if you're somebody that paints with a lot of water, 
in your paint. With this black, you're going to make sure you're going to want to make sure that you tone that down a little bit. We don't want this transparent, or it'll kind of lose that really shiny, dark effect. Now, something that tends to happen with eyes is, and this happens almost every time with me, we'll end up with one that's a little bit bigger. And if that happens, no problem. Or, or sometimes maybe you'll just accidentally draw a line out a little bit. And so you'll have to grow that eye to kind of accommodate. And that's okay. All we have to do, if one of them gets a little bit bigger, is balance it out with the other one. So we want them to be roughly the same size. We just want a symmetrical face. That is all. And it's a bit of a football shape. I can zoom in right there. Although one side is more of a curve than the other. Let me know in the comments how you're doing with this. I'd love to, I'd love to hear <laughs> from you guys. What we can do next is clean out that small round brush. And we're going to add some of our white detail. Now, with this, we're all going to have different colors in certain areas. So in the face, you might have a darker color than me. And in the, cl uh, the cloak or whatever, you might have a darker color as well. So the important thing is that we don't want this white to stand out way too much. So if that's happening to you, you can add a little bit of that color. So if we're doing the white in the coat here, we can add a little bit of that brown to it just to make it match a little bit more. And then we could even come back later and add some really bright highlights. Same thing with the face. If your white highlights are just looking way too white, you can add in a little bit of that green just to soften it up. So I'm going to start with the highlights in the face. So I'm taking a little bit of my white. And again, you can add a little bit of green if you're nervous. And I'm going to water this down pretty well. So this will make it nice and transparent. So you can kind of test it by tipping your plate, seeing how that drips around. So this will make it so we can see some of that green through it. I'm going to start here on the ears. And I know on the camera this looks really, really bright. And that's because I have a lot of water in there. But when that dries, that's going to be a little bit transparent. So we can add this highlight along the top of the ear. We want to make sure we're not covering up all of the middle tone. We want to leave some of that. This is just all the areas where this light right here from the sun is catching on the body. So maybe a little bit right here on this earlobe. Again, remembering the thickness of our lines based on how hard we press down. We can add in some little highlights here on this cheek. So it's this nice circle right here. And we're just highlighting the top side of that. We can create the nose right here by bringing a highlight down right here. And 
And you'll see these turn a little bit more green in a moment as they dry. We've got a little bit of a highlight right here on this ridge on that face. I like to do a little bit right here under the mouth as well. Then we have the side of the face here that's facing the sun. Let's do a nice smooth line. Down there. And then emphasize that cheek even a little bit more. Then we have the top of the this side of the head. And the whole top ridge of this ear. Now one thing we can do if we feel like any of these got to be too much is clean out that brush and pick up some of that watered down white. You can actually wipe a little bit of it away. A little bit of it away. All right, so now when you squint and look at it, you should really see all of the, the depth to that, okay? So it should really look 3D. If it's not qu quite working, you can darken up the shadows and you can brighten up the highlights. Now with the same watered down white, we can add some highlights in the cloak. So again, these are going to be on the side that is facing this light right here. And these can be really nice and squiggly, creating that, that wrinkled fabric kind of texture. And again, the more you press down, the thicker that line is going to be. And then you can th thin it up by just lifting it away. And now with either brush, the small one or the thicker one, we can dot on some white along this top edge of this furry collar that he's got, or fluffy collar. So we're starting from the top, but we're going to bring it actually most of the way down. Just leaving a true shadow along the very bottom edge. As we go to this side, it might become a little bit thinner because this is the shadowed side. And one area I forgot, or almost forgot, is the fingers here. So we can add this little highlight on the side facing the sun. 
or on these ones, it would be the other side. It's catching some light that's reflecting off of something. So we're almost there, you guys. You'll notice that as the white faded, or the water in it kind of dried up, we can see more of that green through it. And I really like the effect and the way that looks. Now, make sure that the black is totally dry before you add this detail. But we're going to add the highlights in those eyes. And this is really the step that transforms this painting more than anything else we've done so far. So grab a little bit of water to have in your brush, but really we want this paint to be pretty thick. I'm using that tiniest brush. And again, we're adding these on the sun side there. Barely touching the canvas and getting this really bright highlight. And wherever it is on this eye, we want it to be about the same place on the other one. And notice I don't go all the way to the edge with the black. I like to leave just a little bit of that black as a border, okay? So if you do accidentally bring the white all the way out to the side, make sure that you go back later with some black and create a little bit of a border there. Now there's one other highlight on these eyes that can really help them pop even a little bit more. And that is to take some more of that watered down white. So you can use the same one if you have some more of it, or just add some more water to your white. And add this from the other corner, the other side of the eye. And what this is, is just a little bit more faded highlight, a little bit more dull highlight that's bouncing off of the ground somewhere. So it just makes these eyes really, really reflective. And again, we're not going all the way out to the edge of the eye. We're leaving a little bit of that black border. Again, let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to see. But there is one more thing that we're going to do. I don't remember if I said that that was the last part. But hold on, there's one more thing. And that is to just add a little bit of a darker color into this painting. So that's one way that we can make our paintings stand out more, is just by building those highlights and building those shadows, making them really strong and really pushing the painting both directions. So I think we can make our shadows a little bit stronger, our darker colors a little bit stronger. So with this burnt umber, I'm just adding a little bit of water to it and using that small round brush. And I'm going to darken up a few areas in this coat. Adding a really thin line with this brush I darkened up the area where the, co the collar connects to the rest of it. The seam right here where the two sides come in and connect. As well as the separation between the arms and the body. And the very bottom right here. And then while we're at it, we can add a little bit of a shadow down here. So just pull some of this dark brown out from that body. Again, we want these lines to lie flat.
And then as a final touch, you can go ahead and add your signature so that everybody knows who painted it and if you're painting with other people at home right now so that you don't get confused whose Yoda is whose. I had a great time painting with you guys. I hope you all enjoyed this as well. If there's any details, any questions that you have, please go ahead and drop those in the comments. Also, if you'd like to take a photo of your painting and share that with me, I love seeing how these turned out. I saw some great results last week at the painting then. So leave your comments, leave your photos, and this has been a great time, you guys. Um, follow us on Facebook. Go to our Patreon if you want to see our full collection of our virtual painting classes. And tune in for our next virtual lessons like this. We have these most days of the week, so you can find our calendar of those at creativelyuncorked.com. Anybody sticking around? Thank you, Chloe. It's been fun painting with you. I'd love to see how your painting turned out. If there's any other details you want to add, again, I was saying we can press the contrast even more in some places. So if you want to add an even brighter white, if that watered down white didn't quite do it, you can press those highlights even more. And you could even add a little bit of black paint in if you want to, to really deepen the shadows in a few choice areas. All right, it looks like everybody has gone away. So thank you all for painting with me. You have a great evening. Bye.